The problem with the France is uh, the weak people. The weak. This is a problem. The Germans come and the, 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 the French say, you here to have us making sex? We don't know how to fight. We're making sex. That's what the French do. This movie <laughs> is about French people <laughs> doing what the French do. Having sex, being weak people. It's not a good movie. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. We have a special offer for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code SOS at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipment. That's bluechew.com, promo code SOS to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. <laughs> Welcome back to SOS VHS. We have a great guest today. He's a New Yorker. Okay, sorry. I promise not to do that again. But yes, today I have one of my favorite comedians. He's from New York. You guys know him from all his success in stand-up comedy and podcasting. Today we have Yanis Papas, and we're talking to him about his favorite movie, The Dangerous Liaisons. So get your popcorn ready and get ready for a game of seduction. It'll be beyond your control. I rewatched the movie, which is amazing. Yeah. And I was thinking, who 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 has betrayed you like this for this to be your favorite movie? Dangerous liaisons. <laughs> and in French, I think it's les liaisons Jésus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was my. I, I don't know. I was. I'm a precocious. I guess I'm a precocious, sensitive kid, or as they call it in the old neighborhood in Brooklyn, an agate. <laughs> <laughs> because it's yeah it's, I've seen it like a hundred times it made me a big fan of John Malkovich and who has betrayed me it made me a big fan of Uma Thurman <laughs> that's uh yeah this is our producer here right <laughs> bones yeah. thugs and harmony um I almost think I watched I liked the movie and wa liked it at such a young age I almost feel like I got into bad relationships in order to fulfill me being in the movie. So I sought, I sought out a lot of Glenn Close's. Yeah, she was excellent in that. Love that. The only weak link in that movie is what? Keanu. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. a, Keanu in a period piece is just, it's top. Very non-believable. It's yeah. hard for me to, I have to treat with great skepticism <laughs> Whatever you have to say about her, that's like a scene. If I think, I, I think those are the exact lines too. At the end, when you, know, like, yeah. I, I, you need to get a message to her, you must allow me to great treat with great skepticism. <laughs> horrible. He's just a horrible actor, but he pulls it off as John Wick. Yeah, he's either Neo or John Wick. Yeah, but he's not. Yeah, he's not a period piece. For the other two, though, I, I mean, I saw the movie also when I was very, very young. I was eight, I think, when I saw it. And some I think some of the stuff have to have gone over my head, but I was fascinated by it. And for yeah. me, John Malkovich has always been that person. I never saw a movie of his that was like, this is a better John Malkovich or a better Glenn Close. It's one of those movies. Yeah, it's a classic story, right? It's a classic book, but it's one of those movies that was done well. And yeah, John Malkovich is just... It's one of those movies where you're going, who I can't picture somebody else playing that role. Yeah. Of Vicon, or um, uh, I can't picture anyone else in Glenn Close's role. I can't remember the character's name. It's been a the, little The Marquise. Marquise, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, even even um, Madame de Valange. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember. She's a she's a great actress. She's been a red, the redheaded. She's oh. Uma Thurman's mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was perfect. Uma right. Thurman was great in it. Uma Thurman's great, As yeah. sort of like that innocent uh, virgin who gets deflowered <laughs> and manipulated by V. Kant. Uh -huh. um, everyone was great, except yeah, Michelle Kiana. Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer was incredible in it. Yeah. And she still looks the same. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's like the most young looking old woman. Her and Cher, I'll fuck them both. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did, did you remember seeing the movie in the theater what? um no i don't think I, maybe i did see, if i did see it in the theater it would be something my parents took me to because back then like my parents were like had me older 
And like, I had no childhood, right? I had a brain injured brother and I was three and they were like, watch him. And then also we're going to see Reds and Jagged Edge. Come with us, you're four, you're gonna have nightmares forever. So it's, po it's possible they took me to see it and maybe that's why I liked it because they've taken me to so many adult movies when I was too young and I couldn't sleep. Do you think, I, I mean, I'm not sure your parents uh, were born in the U.S., right? But I My feel mother like, was born in Greece. Oh, your mom was born yeah. in Greece. Your dad, I, I was just thinking if it's She's a, a Euro dirty immigrant. European theme because I was, my parents had to take me to that movie. If I was eight, you know, there was no way that it would We're educated. Me. We come from educated families. <laughs> right. There's a lot of slobs out here who want to go see the latest rock movie. But me and you want to hold hands right. and watch that movie. Yes. And it is. It's not even in the gay way. <laughs> we're just educated bourgeois. Mm -hmm. And that's appropriate for the movie we're talking about. <laughs> we're bourgeois. Right. We're bougie. Um, also, like, well, do, do you know that uh, Annette Benning like, was... Wait, who was that? Annette Benning. Oh, okay, yeah. I knew who it was, but I just like... <laughs> you wanted to made... hear me talk and say yeah, it I again. I swear to hear it again. <laughs> Annette Benning. And Annette Benning yeah. uh, <laughs> auditioned for this movie, and then Sarah um, Jessica Parker got the role and, and, and passed. Wow. Before Glenn Close got it. Wow. But then the following year, they made a movie called Valmont. I don't know. You saw that. I did. The Foreman version. Yeah. No, no and good. And then Benny Yeah. Benin, yeah. And, and, it's uh, actually been made three times. Yeah. So it was Valmont, that one. And then they did it with uh, Cruel Intentions. It Cru was Cruel Intentions. They have now a new one coming. I have like, another on, one, On huh? Netflix. Oh, wow. Um, is so, it like a miniseries or? I, th I think they did a movie and now a series. Yeah. They so. got to leave it alone. And I'm, one thing that they're doing is every time is like younger, you know, because like the first... So the Colin Firth version is like they're in their thirties maybe, um, uh, and then the Cruel Intention they're in high school. Yeah, and it feels like I don't know. Yeah, this one's gonna be like, what's up? I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna text Victor. Right. What's up, Victor? Is uh, Mad is Madame de Blanche Kim Cool F O F? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cool. Yeah. I don't know. Deaf. I feel a little that Gossip Girl show and all that can, like. It's kind of like this sort yeah. of thing. It's very fascinating. I guess they want to <laughs> introduce different age groups to the story. <laughs> right. Yeah. Why, do you, why do you think people are so fascinated by this story? Um, because it's uh, it's like it's like um, the Christmas Carol, but for <laughs> love, right? So you got this guy. He's like Ebenezer Scrooge. He's, <laughs> he's manipulating all these women. He's notorious. He's smooth. John Malkovich nails it. Um, And uh, and then he falls for this chaste woman who he seduces thinking that he really loved Glenn Close because Glenn Close was his evil opposite. But the love brings out the, you know, the good part of him and it changes him. And um, and then it's sad because he can't let go of that old part because he's so used to it, that competitive old part. And uh He start, feels Glenn Close start to play him, so he wants to play her back, and he gets dragged in, and his old habits went out, and he uh, ends up killing. He ends up killing. Michelle Pfeffer dies from love, and he dies from love. It's so romantic! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny that uh, so I would put I, that I, movie I, on and I would fall in love with whoever I was with I would make every girl I was dating I grew up in Brooklyn and I would date girls named like Camille like Italian girls <laughs> who had no idea and I'd put that on and they'd be like you know like Camille and they'd be like what what is it why why are you putting this on for what is this what's wrong with you and I'll be like trust me this is a great French movie yeah. <laughs> but is it uh, do you do you so do you feel that the message is like this super romantic Romantic. That's how you see the movie. Very... Super romantic. Super romantic. Um, <laughs> super realistic. I think, um, you know, I think there's a cynic and there's an optimist in all of us. And so I think in this movie, it manifests itself, um, you know, in uh, through the relationship that he has with um, Michelle Pfeiffer and Glenn Close. The, yeah. Glenn Close is the cynical choice. Michelle Pfeiffer is the optimistic, um, you know, nonsensical choice. So love overrides, you know, uh, reason. It overrides appropriateness. You know, she was married and, you know, she fell for him. And uh, so, yeah, she gave it all to him. And she was a chaste woman, didn't believe in all that. But she fell for him and then he ripped her heart out. Yeah, it's beyond my control. 
Do you think it's like, um, what do you think then is the, the takeaway? Your takeaway is like love conquers all kind of thing? Love, love. Well, love kills you. <laughs> yeah. Love that's... kills you. Love makes you sick. We've all been there. Mm -hmm. um, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. The morning of a relationship is like a death. And it's, I think, in some ways worse than a death, um, even of your parents, because your parents didn't make you come a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't like go to <laughs> most parents bone thugs and army love that yeah, yeah most parents <laughs> yeah above the mason dixon line <laughs> um so it feels horrible you get chemically connected to someone mm -hmm. and then you get your heart ripped out and it's it, you have to mourn it like a death and you get so depressed and you have to um you learn something from it you grow you become a new person. It's beautiful. This is a, that's a real, you're going to have that problem a lot if people eat popcorn. Um, and um, so it, it, this is a, this is a realistic movie about how love kills. Yeah. Love, um, love kills if you don't treat it right. You have to treat it right. You have to give into it. You have to submit to it like God. And if you don't, you'll be punished like the devil. Mm. You got to give into magic. You got to believe in magic. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the, the, well, the world was in some of, for these characters at least, the world was at balance at the beginning, right? Yeah. And then after love kicks in, everything crumbles down. So I feel like none of these characters like survive emotionally, you know, they're not like, they can get there because of their own, you know, how they see the world. And you said uh, in an interview that your dad told you that surviving emotionally was one of those things that, you know, that was as important, if not more, than surviving yeah. physically. So yeah. how do you survive emotionally? Oh, man. Um, and I've had some major trauma in my life. Uh, therapy. Um, I think it's important to have a wide network of friends, to work on your ego, to try to enjoy yourself and laugh, um, but create have a lot of friends. I, I also did social work for a little while. And the thing that a lot of people who, you know, a, lot, a thing that people have in common who, uh, you know, become mentally unwell is um, it's in some sort of asocial feature, you know? So um, spend a lot of time with people. And, you know, happiness is the company you keep. So be in good company. Uh, try, to, try to keep things light and um, meditate. But <laughs> Do yeah, you? I've started. It's great. It's really great. But um, yeah, so surviving emotionally, it's not easy. It's not easy. And it's, it's something humans have to do because we're the only animal that cries. We're the only animal that feels deeply. We're the only, only animal that falls in love. This magical thing of love. We, there's a little mystique. We've evolved up to the point where we can kind of taste the mystical chord of the universe a little bit. We, can almost, we get a little glimpse of God or <laughs> infinity. And so uh, that 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 comes with um, that comes with some pain and some yeah some pain comes with some pain, mm. you know yeah, yeah. Um, so okay, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I. Why is your wedding ring on your right hand? Spanish. Oh, is it Spanish? Yeah. You know, Greek Orthodox, it's supposed to be on the right hand as well. Mm -hmm. But but you, I go with the left because I don't want people to ask questions. Right. Yeah. I. I want people to ask questions. You, do. you know, well, this they is don't like, have, once you hear the accent, you get that's redundant. Right? At that point. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Like yeah. for people who don't hear me talk, yeah, first. you sound like <laughs> you're doing a post-match interview at Wimbledon. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Carlos Alvarez, how did you win that match? <laughs> yeah, this was a difficult have, match. Have you been watching Wimbledon? Is I that? love tennis. Yeah. Yeah, I love tennis too. But uh, I think that goes with like in dangerous liaison. <laughs> yeah. Tennis, more civilized stuff. More like, yeah. Yeah, stuff that I can't really share with a lot of my friends because they're just too fucking stupid, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's really like everything's gay to all these fucking mongrels out here. <laughs> but it's good stuff. Yeah. Um, so if in the world of comedy or in your world, who would be uh, someone like the Marquis uh, of Martel and who would be someone like, like uh, Valmont? <laughs> <laughs> In the world of comedy? Yeah. <laughs> Amy Schumer. <laughs> Amy Schumer would be Glenn Close. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you just give her the role. You don't even audition. You go, there you go. 
you can take that role. Because <laughs> um, she can play bad. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I can see it. You, right. know, you got to be wicked. You got to be manipulative. You got to be ambitious. Yeah. You got to be able to control. I mean, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Um, V-Con. Um, V-Con. Oh, it's a good one. Who would be V-Con? And it doesn't have to be for a movie. It could be just in real life. Oh, in real life. <laughs> Who would be V-Con? Chris Stefano. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, uh, in your relationship with him, are you are you <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer or, or are you Oma Thurman? I'm in Michelle his Pfeiffer! <laughs> 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 yeah. And is he is he is he V Car You John Bakovich No. Um <laughs> Um So were you fascinated at the end of the 80s beginning of the 90s with all of the erotic thrillers that were coming out you know because I remember watching this movie and being completely fascinated by it even if I didn't com completely understand it and then it was like The fatal yeah. attraction was at the year yeah. before, you know, and then it's basic instinct and yeah. disclosure and I yeah. don't know, color of the night, all of those eighties and nineties movies. So, you know, what 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 do you think? Why why do you think it all happened at, at that time? Because they they disappear. Yeah, it was it was all about the like um, well also um, Jagged Edge was one of those too, and Glenn Close was in that as well. Right? Yeah, where yeah. Where she yeah. like I think it's Jeff Bridges. She like the she gets crazy <laughs> and breaks in his house or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and she played a couple of those roles. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe for the same reason, like action movies got popular during the Cold War. Maybe, <laughs> I, it's, yeah, I don't know why. And it, it was always about a, um, like a, pow a powerful vixen. Right. Like a manipulative vixen who was deadly. And I don't know. It, it must be because one of them became a hit and then they just they they copied him. Yeah. I mean, Hollywood is not known for its originality. Right. Yeah. Uh, Every uh, success story you hear in Hollywood <laughs> is always like, we got turned down by every place. And then everything after that imitates that thing that got turned down every place. That is true. Yeah. 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 And I feel like the, this year, that's what I'm saying. Like this, the next year, Valmont came and it's like, oh, wait a second. Didn't I, have I not? And then there's Volcano and what, whatever is the other Deep Impact or, you yeah. know, all those movies that start coming yeah. in pairs. And, you uh, know, it's a funny thing because why did they make, yeah, why did they do Cruel Intentions? And I don't think Dangerous Liaisons was a box office hit, was it? No, I think yeah. it made like $37 million or something like that. Like, um, it was an okay, you know, yeah. they, they made their money back. So, so it's it's interesting why they tried to make more of them. Yeah. You know? like it, I don't know. I think my understanding is Valmont was being worked out at the same time and then Christopher Hampton, I think, is the screenwriter. That's right. They were both being ha they were happening. So at the he same started time. writing faster because his play had his play was a hit. Yeah, and then they adapted That's him to the right. movie. And I like, remember that. That's an interesting thing. Right, is that there was these two the same? See they were who making got the, the same movie. movie. Yeah, which is so strange. Very strange. This episode is sponsored by Bluetooth. Let's talk about sex. Summer is around the corner. And do you want to bring the heat in the bedroom? <laughs> Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up. Bluetooth.com. The process is simple. Sign up at Bluetooth.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescriptions within days. The best part? It's all done online. No visit to the doctors, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. So Bluetooth tablets are made in the USA. They're prepared and shipped just in a matter of days and they get shipped in a discreet package. I think, uh, I mean, you might know some of my comedian friends who who use it and they are so happy about it. Uh, so I, I definitely recommend it. Bluetooth wants to help you have better sex. Discover the options at bluetooth.com. Chew it and do it. And we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Bluetooth for free when you use our promo code SOS at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipment. That's Bluetooth.com promo code SOS to receive your first month for free. Visit Bluetooth.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Bluetooth for sponsoring the podcast. Um, Yeah, you saw the second one too, right? And like, I, I don't think it works as well. It's, no, it's, no, it no. has moments and... No, Dangerous Liaisons is the best one by far. Yeah. And it's, it's because of the... It's just everything, it, it, and and not only the acting. It's like um, 
it, it was done well as a period piece. The movie, the the yes. music is very that time. Yeah, right. yeah. The uh, the locations, um, it feels very much like you're there. Yeah, at that um, time, that was like Stephen Frears, like I think like fourth movie or something. Like that. He had been doing like this small like very European movies, like My Beautiful Laundrette with Daniel Day Lewis and things like that. And he got this movie where now he's playing with American actors and he's trying to do this master shot with like very theatrically moving cameras and it's like, oh, they can act. They, they don't know how to do movies like this. So uh, the whole movie is close-ups. Uh -huh. If you, if you uh -huh. like, oh, that's where they shine. They shine on close-up. That's where I can see the secrets and the lies. Uh -huh. So the well, movie became that, just close-ups. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> that works for the theme too. Right. Yeah. So because yeah. there's layers going on, people right. are being lying all the time. All the time. People are lying all the time. Yeah, it's very su subtle. I don't know. I think like I enjoy Game of Thrones more for like this part and the big battles and all that. It's just the the power plays yeah and the and the seduction yeah one way or another yeah um, yeah this is just a simple <laughs> seduction story it's also good because there's people you know there are people in the world who do that you know they're they're manipulative yeah and um they're always they're always so seductive you know they're so yeah Chris. you want them yeah they're so they're so enticing you right know? they're um you know, has you know, anyone said said you like, like this? They're skittles. They're, they taste good, <laughs> but they're bad for you. Yes, you know, but they're irresistible. Like yeah. yeah, nobody's <laughs> ever said that about me. No, <laughs> no, I'm saying has anyone seduced you like that? Yes, <laughs> yes. Who? And it was great. <laughs> uh, I have no regrets. The mental anguish that followed afterwards, though. Mm. I mean, it was one of those where it was like, you know. She broke up with her boyfriend to be with me, was with me, went back to her boyfriend, broke up with her boyfriend to be with me. And I was just chasing, chasing, chasing. Um, I remember like hopping on the train in New York, like like I was going to get a drug. Like she was like heroin. Like I needed, like, I remember when I was trying to like leave her, I remember we were laying in bed and like I, it took everything in my power not to touch her. All I wanted to do was touch her. But I was trying to, it was like trying, it was like withdrawing from a drug. And it was it was tough. She, I, how old were you? Huh? How old were you? This was, I must have been early thirties. Oh, so early yeah, 30s, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now fucking. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like somebody can do deductive reasoning. Um, yeah, or twenties. <laughs> or teens. No, I thought you were gonna say like yeah. Yeah. Listen. No, it was college. early thirties. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm a child, right? I'm a comedian. So <laughs> when I was thirty, it's like a normal person's fifteen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, all right, and have you seduced anyone and one like in that? One college as well. Oh, one so in college you, as well. Yeah. Although, so all your relationships until you, your recent one, pretty I guess, much, like yeah, have been like healthy. Yeah, pretty much. Well, no, I had a few, passionate. I would either I would go from the unhealthy to the too healthy. <laughs> I would go from the absolutely, you know, like up and you know one of these relationships passionate manipulative sexy to like the boring healthy one where you know she liked me more than i liked her and it mm. was just like so it didn't work out yeah love is never mutual i don't think it's never you know? mutual there's always a lover and a beloved i believe in some way and does it change who is who in the relationship no, I just think it's, no. I just think it's like, I don't know. I think it, there's, there's always like, I don't want to say dominant and submissive because it's different, but the same principle It's like, there's someone always who's a little more beloved and someone who's a little bit more, um, love the lover. So do you love your wife more than she loves you? I mean, way, I'm, of course I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> of yeah. course I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I thought I. Th I mean, romantic I, love, and yeah. then there's like that fucking. No. We have a family love. Nobody makes a movie about that shit. You never see a movie about changing <laughs> diapers and two people going, "What? What are we having for dinner?" Right. Yeah, that's yeah. not a fun movie. It's no, no. a horror movie. They yeah. made them in horror. Yeah, those are horror. That's <laughs> yeah. a horror movie. Yeah, right. But that's most of. If Michelle Pfeiffer and and, <laughs> and John Malkovich stay together, that's what the sequel would be. Right. Or he's changing diapers, yelling at each other. Right interesting yeah. but but true <laughs> well yeah and that's why it's kind of great because it's like when a when a rock star dies young you get to make them into a god they're, they're young forever and maybe that's what's great about this love story is they both die 
you know, it's very Romeo and Juliet in that way. Yeah. And uh, it so it stays, it's like immortal. Yeah. It never gets ugly. You never see them playing the halftime, you know, you never see them with a facelift playing the halftime with, with Cardi B or whatever. Sure, but they die off unhappiness they die of unhappiness but the <laughs> love they die of the unhappiness from the love oh, i see I yeah see. yeah yeah so you're romantic yeah <laughs> i used to be uh-huh what happened life life yeah. got you cynical you get, yeah i get that you gotta but you gotta fight for it though i guess <laughs> is uh, now a good time for some rapid fire questions yeah sure sure <laughs> go ahead yeah all right <laughs> what actor would play you in a biopic of your life Biopic of my life, uh, Jared Leto. Jared Leto would play me. What movie line do you quote the most? I can't think of it right now. Shit. All right, we'll come back to it. Yeah. What's the first movie you saw in a theater? First movie I saw in a theater, I think might have been, um, the one I can remember first is War Games. Uh-huh. Matthew Broderick, that I can remember. Superman yeah. or Spider-Man? I'm always a Superman guy because I like the bulge. <laughs> He's uh, got a chick, too. He's got Lois Lane. That might help me with the next one. Rotten Tomatoes or Pornhub? Pornhub. <laughs> Avatar Who's or Election? Select? Avatar what? Or Election. Election. Great wow. movie. So funny. What's your guilty pleasure movie? My guilty pleasure movie is probably Boomerang. With um, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yes. You got Martin Lawrence, David Alan Greer. Hilarious movie. Fun. The yeah. audience might be hearing it, but what's your favorite movie snack? Favorite movie snack's <laughs> popcorn. Was this bad? Did it make it pop, pop, pop the whole interview? We're at the movies. It feels just like uh, being at the movies with Who would have made this the main snack of movies? Like, it's the right. noisiest thing. Shower or a grower? I'm a grower. Uh, I'm a grower. I'm not nice. a shower. <laughs> if your life was a movie, what would the title be? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Besides Dangerous the Liaisons. Almost, man. <laughs> yeah. Besides Dangerous Liaisons, what movie have you rewatched the most? True Colors, probably. John Malkovich, James Spader. Before sunrise, before sunset, before yeah. midnight. Yeah. Um, and Goodfellas, anytime it's on. I just watch it. Also, Training Day. Those are two movies that when they're on, I just watch them. Yeah. All right. That's the end of the rapid fire question. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Okay. One more fact about this movie. Do you know that they have an alternate, they shot a bunch of alternative endings? No. And that they didn't know how to finish the movie. And actually, they have one of the endings has like her going to the guillotine and like, her head chopped no and that they laughed like watching the the ending they couldn't like even like breathe themselves to cut it in to for a for a screen it was too funny for them it was just like this is impossible this is what are we doing right and it was actually glenn close who came out with that final moment at the mirror oh it's so good so good oh it's she really came up with that i didn't know that yeah because i think the, so I think the writers something said like i want to put a, a f- sentence from the book and the on the screen that says something I think it's something like, and from then on, she had a soul on her face or something like that, like poetic. And, and she said, oh, no, I, I can act it. Oh, that's <laughs> incredible. Oh, that's incredible. That's a, Oh, that makes it so much better to know that. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it, be, and it begins with her with her whole like face on, right? And then it ends with her taking the makeup. And also she goes from like pretty to like kind of ugly and like her skin color is like red. Yeah. And so it's very symbolic of her mask, her psychopathic mask <laughs> right. coming off. Uh, the, the ending was perfect. That's, that's and, awesome. And as a last scene, it was perfect that, you know, the letters got circulated and- Right. Finally, she was exposed. And yeah, yeah, that ending of her in the mirror was perfect. Did you read the book? Um, I read it when I was little, like so long ago. Yeah, because the ending and then is like one of those things that had like a moral, obviously has to, something bad has to happen to her. And then I think she gets smallpox, so she gets this figure. Right. And then she also loses uh, her trials. She has a trial going on so she loses all her money and then even has like a a thing at the end of the quote that says and many more things bad things happen to her that i cannot even tell you about it right right so right. so it's that sort of thing and i think the writer when he did the play he took all of that away 
and he let her win right during the the broadway was play. it was it a book or originally or a play i can't no, remember it was a book originally like a so 1700 I I play ah, i think i might have read the play and then yeah the play yeah, was written was by like the same kid. guy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the play is more like a fun like the the bad guy can win you know kind of right. thing Right. And then they went back to this. The order. movie just supplants it in my mind. Because yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Like, yeah, I just enjoyed it as a movie so much. That particular rendition. And yeah. I watched it so many times that it kind of supplanted all the memories of whatever I read as a little kid. Yeah. It feels like your personality is not very much like the ones in the movie. Are you attracted to the opposite thing, or like, or are you deceitful? And I, you know, do you like that stuff? Do you apply any of that stuff to your career comedy? No, <laughs> no, I don't. And you sh you should if you want to make it in business. <laughs> um, I don't. I think I think there was a time that I kind of romanticized it about like the seducing a woman, but it was really more just the 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 you know the the romantic aspect uh, of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's the same reason why I like that trilogy. You know, it's, right? Um, it's it's what we experience. Yeah. It's and and it's the greatest moments of our life. You know, the greatest mom your moment of your life is not going to be going to see a Fast and Furious movie in the franchise. It's not going to be the, the greatest moment of your life is going to be who you're with yeah. at the f f Fast and Furious franchise. All my best memories are with women. All my best memories are some type of love or affair or sexual experience those are the best memories they they beat everything they beat uh any great show i've done any time they, they're the number one like um it's just the best thing that can happen in life <laughs> is a romantic connection um so the movies that really nail that are the uh, best yeah. to me annie hall was is another one there's so many that yeah. i like that are about uh, romance that are done well. They're not done cheesy, you know? Yeah, and you like, like more like the drama romance than the rom-com. Done well, yeah, 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 good story, done well. Yeah, so if you could give advice to any of these characters, you know, if you could go to their, their time and say, hey, what, what would that advice be? If Vicon, she's a hoe, man, you'd <laughs> stop. You, you know, Glenn Close is a hoe, bro. She's gonna kill you. <laughs> You're gonna lose. Cause she's a, she's a women are, are just have the advantage mm -hmm. for whatever reason. When a woman when a woman is bad, she just has the advantage. I mean, look, uh, you know they say uh, fucking Helena Troy, you know, started <laughs> a war. I mean, they're just Elizabeth was probably the most successful dictator of all time, if you think about it, right? Yeah, Elizabeth the first. The she, yeah. yeah, she had to cut off her cousin's head. You know, we're, she's looked at as like this great person, but she probably did a lot of horrible <laughs> things. Like, there's no way she's going to hold power. She was so manipulative and so such a marketer. She's basically <laughs> the Andrew Schultz of dictators. <laughs> she, she, you know, she knew that I'm never going to be in public with a guy or be married because I want people to think of me as the Virgin Mary. She tied herself to religion that way. She's mm -hmm. like, I'm pure that way. But you know, she was probably sucking dicks and fucking eating pussies or whatever, or drinking children's blood, whatever things they could get away with because they were in charge of the law. They're mm -hmm. going to do it. Yeah. If you can get away with stuff, you're not going to not do it. You know, you're going to do it. So she was probably really bad. And she's probably the most successful ruler of all time, ruling over the most powerful empire, empire yeah. of all time. Nobody ever talks about that shit. It was a woman. During her period, Shakespeare happened. There was a general peace. She crushed the Spanish Armada, didn't she? Am I getting that right? She did. Yeah. Ooh. Herself. With her pussy. <laughs> herself. Yeah. Yeah. She stuffed all the Spanish ships in her Yeah, we don't, we don't like her in Yeah, Spain. you don't like that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's crazy, dude. Right. Nobody ever talks about that. People always talk about Hitler, Stalin, whatever. Uh, but you know she did some evil shit too. Yeah. You but can't the, be a ruler, but she was in control of history and she said she said to her scribe, remove that part. <laughs> right. Leave the cousin in there because that bitch deserved it. I don't want to send a message to all the rest of my family that if you try to fuck with me, I'll cut your head off. But wow, so that that's the advice is like basically be aware of women. Look at a praying mantis. <laughs> yeah. Look at what they do. You know? Yeah. Like women. Do you know what they do, Andres? I I do. Yeah, I do. They fucking they eat you. Yeah. Um, women after yeah after women, they use you after they use you, <laughs> women. Um, the, I think the the mother wound is the biggest wound, right? I think if you're I think if you're adoptive, your mother rejects you. There's like it's a fact that there's 
a higher chance you're going to be a criminal if you're adopted. Like, I think the female is the independent. Um, there's the e independent variable uh, versus the dependent variable in nature, and we're the dependent variable. You know, they have the womb, they grow the baby, <laughs> they're the ones who nurture the men. They can not nurture us, and we die. They're just in control in a way. We're so dependent on their love. We don't think we are. We don't. We we don't think about you know that aspect. People are like all oh, the men rule the world, but like there was some woman that let that guy live. All she had to do was just smother him, or you know, not feed him, mm. and it would be dead. Yeah, yeah. I, that We're thing all I, fucking. <laughs> you know how many people died because Hitler's mom was a good person. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I know you, you study history, right? Used to, not anymore. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't continue to do it. <laughs> right. I you have an interesting going. take yeah. on the... I don't know what, what the scholars today will... Like the feminist scholars would yeah. think about you. But... <laughs> uh, okay, so I want to know a little bit of your origin story. Like, you, I know you, you were born in Brooklyn. Yeah. Your, your, dad, your dad was fu fully American, but your... your Greek-American, yeah. Greek-American. I mean, like, born here... Right. Your grandfather like came from Greece and right. have a had a diner in New York, right? right. Yeah. So how how did you get from that? What was your you know your childhood, your first job? How did you get into comedy? Yeah. So, um, I was always like class clown, and it was always like <laughs> I was always the attention starved kid, and I always made people laugh. And um, I went to school in D.C. and I thought I was going to be like. A, a CIA agent or something. And then I realized that the only reason I wanted to be a CIA agent, because I was like, had a fantasy of like meeting women at the bar in Miami at the Clevelander and telling them I was a CIA agent. I went back to New like York. Like two lies you were doing the... Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think it was probably inevitable. Um, you know, it was the only thing I've ever done decently, uh, you know, that I had a, a natural ability to do. I just made people laugh. And um, so that's basically, I pursued it because of that, yeah. What yeah. was your first job? First job was, um, first job was a fun, well, I mean, I had jobs, you know, I worked for my dad's office. I, I had jobs um, when I was a kid and I worked in college. But my first job after I graduated college was an interesting one. I worked for a pretty, a pretty much a con artist. <laughs> um, she, she was a very interesting woman. I think she might still be alive. I don't know. Um, this I don't know. Like, there's no chance she's gonna see this, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I think I think you're you're good to go. I, time. Did, did she make you said you someone and like no? no. But she yeah. was an interesting dude. She was interesting. So she was like a world famous poker player, and she was like one of, like maybe the only female had who was highest ranked, and she also like uh, was like a general counsel. Uh, she would she she had a place a placement company for like general counsel level lawyers but the company was just her and she hired like me and another girl and like paid us nothing and she would change voices to make the company seem bigger she would create characters and be like hi this is K this is kk and she would talk with a british accent and be like hello and and she would like be her own secretary and uh, she she still owed me money. She came to my first comedy show though, which was very nice of her. <laughs> but like, yeah, she owed me money by the end. She just didn't pay. And she uh, she was a very interesting woman. She knew Pataki, Governor Pataki. She knew uh, former Mayor Giuliani. <laughs> she got a big loan. I remember a check came by delivery, by uh, hand delivery, you know, messenger from like one of the biggest real estate guys in new york for like 50k that she needed she said she had cancer she could have been faking it i mean she was an, she was a interesting woman and that was an interesting job and and i worked out of her apartment and i was hired as like for the company but next thing i knew i'm just well wa wa i was walking her little fucking dogs and I, it just it's just how it happened but i did jerk off in her apartment once <laughs> <laughs> true story was like i did jerk off you know i was there i was the only one there and she would say she would always say there's cameras everywhere but this was before like cameras were easy to put places so i didn't think there was because i jerked off and she never said anything so i know she was lying about that too she was a liar she was a fucking a lot of successful people are yeah yeah a comedians uh, lie all the time uh, comedian look there's two types of comedians there's no middle ground here you have sociopathic <laughs> sociopathy uh, extreme levels of narcissism and absolutely very 
uh, absolute sensitive sensitive like completely okay give, give me some names on i'm not giving any <laughs> names but those there really are two types okay very sensitive or just the most callous and aloof and yeah you know can you be both a little bit of both you uh, not really <laughs> not really if okay. you're one of the, you're one or the other uh, you're pretending you know you're either one pretending to be a little bit of the other or vice versa yeah yeah people uh, at their core are either one of the two sensitive or not are you sensitive? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Are the sensitive the you know, are they non sensitive or are more successful? Would you uh, say? Do they help? Does often, it help? Often it helps because they're unencumbered by um conscious. <laughs> <laughs> they they're unencumbered, yeah. You they know go, who you are. They go through life just straightforward. Right. They go up. Yeah. Do you think that first job uh in influenced any of your character work? With all the characters she played, yeah, not not specifically her, <laughs> um, maybe a little bit with uh, my character Maurice, because Maurice was interesting. Then I did social work, and there was this woman who worked at this SRO, which is a single room occupancy in New York that I mm -hmm. did casework at, and she would always be like, "I gotta get out of here." She was she was like she was like, "I got a daughter in Westchester, and I gotta get out of here," and she <laughs> was part of she became part of that character. So, um, but yeah. and maybe just like the love of money was maybe my, uh, the woman who I worked with. Yeah, it was a woman. She lived on. It, she lived in like a penthouse. It was a very interesting experience. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you think like Marisa would would be happy living in like the post uh, revolution France, dressing up like? You know, uh, colonial yeah. style. Oh, she would love to be seduced by Vicar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how in how do you came to podcasting? I mean, I guess like all the comedians found an, an outlet there that was like not completely stand up, but close to that. Is not also yeah. Bizarre. It's an interesting story. So, me and Nate Bargatze mm -hmm. had a podcast a long time ago, and we did everything wrong. <laughs> We had no, uh, you know, it was just, um, I mean, he always blames me, but looking back, I mean, the first like 100 episodes or 50 episodes, we did, we were recording off of a laptop. We didn't even have like a mic. Right. And then we got a snowball mic. There was no video. And this was way before. This was like, oh, did nine? You share, did you share a snowball mic? Huh? <laughs> Did you share we a snowball mic? Snow, but we shared it. It right. sounded awful. Yeah. Um, we didn't do it regularly. Like we'd miss weeks and stuff like that. It was just, um, it was called It Could Be Better. There's episodes, some, there gotta be up there somewhere. <laughs> but so we did that for a little while and then that ended. Um, and then I did like a few failed ones. I did one with my buddy James Mattern. I did one, a dog one with uh, Justin Silver that was really awful. <laughs> I did. Uh, I tried to do one in 2013 by myself when I was just laying in bed with a snowball mic <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, just like vaping, laying in bed. Just it was sounded so awful. It was like I was just rambling. And then um, and then me and Chris started one. And that one, uh, you know, we, we did a web series first and yeah. then we did a podcast and um it, it, it had some magic and you know we kind of yeah how do you how did you slowly. meet uh chris did you guys know each other beforehand no or when, no when did... comedy you know comedy we met in comedy yeah yeah then the the bay ridge boys right was the yeah. so you guys like doing that series decided to do the podcast Is yeah that, yeah we started your podcast um now how do you come up with that i mean i know you like hyenas for he some likes reason history i studied history in college <laughs> Hyenas was my favorite animal. Um, yeah. I used to call him a hyena because he's crazy. He's a little all over the place. He's a little bit like the Lion King hyena. Yeah. Like the, the silly one. Yes, exactly. So um, I, I, it just came together somehow, like mm -hmm. organically, like everything else. So history hyenas, like we'll do history. At first we were going to do history and nature, but the nature kind of just, we did a little bit at the beginning. But right. after we talked about hyenas, like we did an episode or two about hyenas, we kind of moved on. Um, but we incorporated like hyena cackles into it. It was really fun. And I mean, it was, history, a lot of time we, you know, history was like probably the least thing we did on there. So, but we always did some sort of history. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it just, it, it was just organic. It was just, you know, it just kind of evolved organically. Yeah. I, I, I mean, 
I've seen a lot of like the two people podcast comedians and not you know I guess that you you did a bunch yourself there's no always the the chemistry that you right. know pops and you guys had that yeah or like Bobby and Andrew had you know so a few people that when it clicks it clicks when it clicks it clicks and when it doesn't it doesn't um, um and there's no way to explain it yeah it's just uh, organic like love and what yeah <laughs> was it a, a pandemic podcast but mostly um we started before the pandemic but mostly pandemic podcast yeah, yeah. like um I think we were like a year, we were maybe a year before the pandemic, oh, or maybe a year and a half before the pandemic. And um, yeah, we really started to pick up um, when we were, at, when we ended was when it was really picking up. It oh, was I right see. when we ended it, yeah. yeah, yeah Which yeah. confused a lot of people because yeah. it was like about, it seemed like it was poised to take off. Right. Yeah. So you said like it's like like love you know so it ended up is one of the, those relationships Things don't so, end good with nothing you. <laughs> that ends ends good right right, right. so, so he, like he, if everyone said we know he will bond you huh he will no, bond you i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> no he didn't uh but you it did was it. a mutual decision okay okay but yeah so <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna ask you something and it just well <laughs> went then out of my head. but uh <laughs> Um, podcasts are also about learning <laughs> so maybe it's time for sure. knowledge time with the skoducer where yeah. we go more than skin deep uh and i'm just going to tell you some facts about the movie okay uh the novel <laughs> les liaisons dangereuses That's was written in 1782 and has been adapted for stage tv opera ballet and into at least four notable films yeah they're obsessed with that movie with that concept i think one of the characters is billed as a castrado he is the <laughs> opera singer in the chamber music performance a castrado is a male singer who is now forbidden to practice and has been castrated as a boy to prevent his voice from changing in adolescence wait in real life Yes, in real life. They still do that? I don't think they still do that, but they used to do it. There, there is a movie called Il Castrato about that yeah, one of those singers. Yeah, but when did they stop that? I think they stopped that, like, after the pandemic. No, no, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I have no idea. I think it's that 17, you know, with the revolution, I think it went away. Yeah, <laughs> the pandemic. Alan Rickman played the role of Valmont in London and on Broadway, but wasn't established enough according to the filmmakers, so Rickman ended up making his Hollywood debut as Hans Gruber in Die Hard. Yeah. I remember the line now from Trading True Colors. Let's hear it. <laughs> you may get elected, you may even win an election or two, but God help you when the people find out, and the people always find out. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if that's true anymore. Um, <laughs> I feel like it was true, right? But I, I think eventually they, they, they eventually they find out. Well, I, you I may have get you may get away with it for a while. Yeah, but people find out. I heard you say something. I I think you were talking about a little bit like a probably free speech and all that, and you said like that the danger the dangerous people are dangerous because people are stupid or they you know the education is not there that human lies shouldn't be as. Uh, you know, like pe that people's, I guess, like intellectual level or like knowledge is, is down. Yeah, that's pretty evident. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't got to be a social scientist to see that. Yeah, I mean, this country's really gotten fucking dumb. Yeah. I, I think it's global. And, it, and I don't know if it's dumb, but it is manipulated. I don't think like in this seductive, fun way, but it is manipulated. Totally and, manipulated. Yeah. And, um, do you, yeah. It's really like sad. It's really bad. Like, the, you'll never see a podcast with a young person and like, I love Dangerously. As long. It's not right. going to happen ever again. Yeah. Yeah. So, any any solutions as a comedian? <laughs> what would you uh, What would you do to, like... Make jokes about it. That's all yeah. I can do. That's all we can do. But, yeah, it's scary. It's not good. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing for civilization, humanity, for the future. It's not a good thing for the people themselves. So the yeah. more you know, like the more sophisticated you are, the more educated you are, I think the, the more you enjoy life. Yeah. We also suffer too. I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong because stupid people, well, ignorance is bliss. Yes. Yeah. That's they don't right. have anxiety or anything, so. Matrix quote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to be an actor or not? Did you want to be in movies? 
Kind of, but not really. It's weird. Yeah, it was yeah. like it was more just comedy. Yeah. It was more like, oh, I can make people laugh. I'm good at that. So let me, oh, there's a way you can do that by doing a stand-up set. And right. I was like, all right. I'll, I saw an ad in the paper <laughs> um, and I took a class and like he helped me put, he helped, it was a class of people. We put together like five minutes and that's how it started. Yeah. And wh why did you hate LA? <laughs> <laughs> LA, I don't hate it as much anymore, um, but LA is a one industry town. Everyone here is sort of in the entertainment mm -hmm. or there's like an, an underclass, it's right. an underclass <laughs> or uh, entertainment. So it's like annoying people or like people who are like working really <laughs> hard. Good. Yeah. So it's just, um, you know, it's uh, it doesn't have a real foundation. It's got some beautiful parts. I love Manhattan Beach. Malibu's great. You know, there's certain parts of it, but yeah, I have a, I'm just addicted. New York is just, I could never live anywhere outside New York. Even when I lived in Miami for a year, I would go back to New York like almost every weekend I could. And that was just a year and I was just in Miami. It's not that far away. Yeah. But New York is just, if you get infected with the New York bug, it's, it's, there's guys who have it and they'll never leave. Yeah. And I'm one of those guys. Like, you know, you look at some other comics too, they'll leave for a little bit, but I, I guarantee you, because it's just, it kind of is the one of the, it's like the best city. It's like the best. It's It's got everything. It's a universe crammed into a city. Um, yeah, so no, it's great. I, I, I went to school in New York and I, I loved it. I thought it was like the capital of the world. Kind it of kind thing. of is like, in a way. And the I, energy there is just, you can't. And I didn't feel like a foreigner, which was so weird. You yeah, know, coming yeah, to no. like, it's like, oh, everybody. Everyone's like, got some. So yeah, that's, yeah. That, that was so cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I feel like that's why if you want to be in movies, I think like LA has to be the the city. So yeah. it's good that you well, don't. It seems like movies are. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I, hope, I think no, they'll no, come no. back. I think they'll come back mm. in a way that they may, they, I don't think theater, it'll be niche. Yeah. There'll be people who want to go to the theater together, who want to see a good movie, very small. That scene will, it'll be like a scene of people. Yeah. But yeah, movies are kind of over. They're just all superhero movies because they just don't make money anymore. And yeah, I just saw an, an ad for the new like Ridley Scott movie and it's an Apple movie and it's like Napoleon again, like go back to france and 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 it's like this gigantic movie just for tv and it's like oh wow yeah People i think are not... theaters are kind of over it's i think very sad yeah i don't are they closing like i don't even see that many theaters they, yeah i mean amc like the chinese took over <laughs> like i think like they bought they like oh, everything else yeah, yeah, so, I yeah just i mean hats off to them it, it just <laughs> this century belongs to them and they deserve it <laughs> they deserve it they work for it they used our weaknesses against us touche all you can say is too fucking shay tick tock the tick tockization of our attention span worked all right i have one more question for you and it's like, we've what? got a few more questions i can do one uh <laughs> no, i have a few no i go i ahead. have a few go, go for it Giannis. uh do you have any deal breakers for a movie? What makes you instantly hate a movie? Uh, there was a a, re, a cheap remake of a movie for another generation <laughs> is a is a real turnoff. They just did they um, do it all the time, uh, dude. They just did one. It was so bad. It was so cringe. It was a uh, white man can't jump. Oh, and I, it I, was so cringe and so bad. I couldn't. I saw the trailer and I was like, no yeah. way. Yeah. I mean, speaking of you know cruel intention, yeah. Yeah. It's funny that I did, that you asked that question because that is probably my biggest pet peeve. When they try, just you gotta leave it. It's that greed of like, how can we squeeze this lemon more? You can't. You can't just, it's a classic. White Man Can Jump is a classic. Yeah, they tried great movie. Ben Hart a, a couple of years ago. It's like, how? Yeah, it's, like, just, oh. just, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. You what, know? Would, what would be the worst remake of Dangerous Liaisons? <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, I think Cardi B would be uh, Glenn Close's role. Um, I think you could just use Keanu Reeves again. <laughs> but this time as the lead. Yeah, you just use him as, yeah, v -Cont. Uh That way, I think that, and then you could fill in whoever else. It's already bad enough right there. I prefer to watch the Amy Schumer, like Chris DeStefano version. <laughs> oh, that's a great one. That would be a great fucking... <laughs> I would, I would, they would be great, dude. It would be fucking great. They would actually be really great. Yeah. And we look at forward to having you both on the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Well, hey, so the film highlights uh, the consequences of playing, uh, you know, with emotions, uh, manipulating others. That's that's sort of like thematic, like you know, just being the consequences of not being honest with yourself or embracing love and all of that. So, have you ever um, faced any backlash or any challenges and consequences as a comedian pushing back a little bit the boundaries of oh, yeah. things? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, my last special. Um, you know, I make fun of both sides. Yeah, and yeah, I always get that backlash because I do that a lot. I, yeah, I, I'll make fun of anything. And um, so, yeah, people have gotten upset. Yeah. They, and uh, yeah, I've, I've felt the backlash and, you know, I've my characters are edgy and uh, they're real people that you'll find in the world. And so sometimes that hits a little too close to home. Um, the Greeks especially are very <laughs> torn over my character, Mr. Panos. <laughs> yeah. They either love him or hate him. Um, and the ones that love him are usually a little younger. The ones that hate him are a little older. Um um, and it doesn't always break down like that. But, you know, they think I make the Greeks look bad and I'm making fun of Greeks and it's proud people. So, um, yeah, I faced, I faced probably the most backlash from them for that character. How actually. about we have that character review Dangerous <laughs> Liaisons? <laughs> Say again? Have that character review Dangerous Liaisons. Uh, it's, a good, it's a movie that comes from France people. The problem with the French is uh, the weak people. The weak this is a problem. The Germans come and the the the, the French say you here to have us making sex. We don't know how to fight. We make it sex. That's all the French do. This movie is about <laughs> French people doing what the French do: having sex, being weak people. It's not a good movie. They wear they have they wearing wigs. We don't have in Greece. Nobody's wearing the wig. How come you wearing somebody else's hair? Cause you're crazy. You crazy person here. <laughs> I, I think he yeah, should, I don't know if the Greeks ever had wigs. He should be. I know. <laughs> he should do a podcast by himself. Wow! I did one with him. Uh, yeah, yeah. I did one with him. I did one with her. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's some episodes up there. They were there. Some of them were really They're, good, but it was. It's too hard to do a fucking a full, character yeah, and the, for every week. Th yeah, yeah, I started yeah. to lose my hour, mind. Yeah. You starting to think as, as somebody else. It's. It's really. I would do hours. Sometimes I do. Sh I would do shows with her, and I would just be crushing as her. Like people, you know. And I get in a zone, and it's like forty minutes. But I'm like thinking as another person, and it's like, yeah. whoa, because like nobody did that back in history. You'd shoot a scene as a character for five minutes. You wouldn't just go live as that person for a fucking hour or whatever. <laughs> yeah, only Daniel Day Lewis would do something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's just kind of like it gets a little weird, dude. Yeah, one of the things that. I think when the pandemic hit and everybody was depressed, one of the things, you know, I, I started working with, with George and doing Bad Friends and, and a lot of you guys, uh, History of Hyenas and Bad Friends, like, I think help a lot of people uh, get out of that For depression, sure. you know, and like, and hang out with you guys. And I think part of the success was like that you guys were edgy and that you could basically indiscriminately uh, could like make fun of anything yeah no matter what you know sometimes crossing lines and that was kind of like the fun yeah so that's why i'm not super you know i'm not understanding or i'm not in tune with like the backlash now that everybody's receiving because i thought that's what people were searching for you know yeah i think during the pandemic uh they search for it because you know when something is so bad like that <laughs> You're right. not you're not thinking you're not going like oh I'm offended. <laughs> Being offended is the ultimate privilege. That's the irony. Yeah. Being offended at a joke is the ultimate privilege. It yeah. means all your sustenance is met, all your all your needs are well met. Right. That you're even thinking about like can you imagine like if you're struggling like you know in life and like someone says G, you're like that's yeah. the least of your worries. And but do you censor yourself when you you write your comedy? I never like that? censor myself no. ever, uh, for for wor sometimes for the worse. Yeah, but I just I, yeah, yeah. I think I'm one of the. <laughs> I think I I don't know who is more. <laughs> I just say, yeah, I just always say, I I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to censor. I always just go for the funny. Um, you know, obviously there's limits. Yeah. But still, we, you know, you record it and you cut it out. Yeah. Because you don't want to break the flow of the funny. 
All right. And, and okay, so final Ooh, question I'm for me. I'm really going off topic. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. <laughs> but final question. Why would people should watch or rewatch? I think in this case, watch for the first time uh, Dangerous Leah song. Because it's a great, great movie with a great, great story that's timeless, that has great acting, is a well-made movie. And um, we'll stay with you. The best movies stay with you. You ever notice that? Like the character of V. Kant will stay with you. The character of uh, the Marquise will will stay with you. These characters are so uh, impactful that they and they're so massively pulled off by the actors. It's like you know, it's like Denzel in Training Day. That character just stays with you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Daniel Day Lewis in um, Scorsese's Gangs in New York just stays with you. There's so many examples. Those yeah. are just a few off the top of my head. And I didn't even love the movie Gangs in New York, but that character uh, is just just stays with you. And I think similarly, Dangerous Liaisons, those two characters really do stay with you. And you leave the movie, it's real. So you leave the movie, you know, like uh, unresolved. It's unresolved, you don't feel great at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's not, it's an adult movie. It's, um, there's a, there's a, it's tragic. It's a, it's a tragedy yeah. at the end. And uh, beautifully shot, that show, s scene in the Beautiful. snow. So if you're a movie fan, you, every aspect of filmmaking, I think, is done pretty well, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that, it just, and then the way the blood in the snow, it's just, it's just, it's just great. The way, you know, when he's clearly beating Keanu Reeves <laughs> and then, you know, he, he leads up against the wall and the flashbacks. So, you know, exactly. And he, his acting is so great. And then he decides to kill himself in that way is just, is, is perfect. He doesn't kill himself in like a, you know, he kills himself in kind of a heroic way. Right. In a romantic way. In a way. romantic way. Yes. Yeah. It's not just like he swallowed a bunch of pills or whatever. And then, um, yeah, they die of heartbreak, and um, which is a real thing. It <laughs> makes you sick. And um, I don't know if it can kill you. It probably can. I, I, I mean, I'm not sure if like in the way that the movie does, but yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. They, they, the filmmaker said that. When the studio read that, they were like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. So when they, the movie uh, was at a small studio that went bankrupt, and but the guy was a fan of the script and wanted to do it. And then Warner Brothers bought the movie. And because they were in the middle of that, they were able to sneak in and without any interference from the studio. So, wow. so that it kind of happened. Wow. That it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anyone's favorite movie at the studio. It's huh. like you say. There's always this, a little serendipity involved in these, in, right? In these things that these great movies that come to be. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, just that beyond my control scene is oh. just, it's just uh, he he just does such a good job with that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you guys go watch it. Yeah. I've got one more factoid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> During production, Malkovich had an affair with. Pfeiffer, his six-year marriage to actress Glenn Headley ended shortly thereafter. I didn't know that. Yep. I I oh, I wow. read I I have read about that, and it kind of makes sense. I think like one of the things that always people talk about when when with, with movies is like, do you know if you're a great actor and you're living the moment and all yeah. that, do you actually fall in love? Yeah. And there was a lot of like relationships happening in the movies at that. I think the nineties were steamy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That happens to actors. Cause they don't, the actors don't have real personalities. <laughs> so they just believe they're those people and they believe the love is real. And it, it happens all the time. Right. I mean, another one of my favorite movies, uh, state of grace, Sean Penn and Robin Wright. That's where they met. Right. And so, and then it never lasts because they realize they're not the characters. It, it makes or they change to another movie and they right. go, my new character doesn't love you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything to promote? Yeah, just come see me on tour. Uh, I got a lot of dates. GiannisPappasComedy.com and watch my podcast, The Giannis Pappas Hour. Woo -woo. Thank you so much. Yeah. So much fun. Thank you. That was really fun. <laughs>